Hello everyone. I was just checking to see if my computer was going to show me if I was live because I forgot my password so I got locked out of my iPad on Facebook. So what are you going to do? So let me just check and see if I see myself. Let's hope I see myself. Oh, oops. All right. Sorry about this, guys. Um, there we go. I think I'm live because I do see a few of you guys watching me. So, um, oh, Elisa just said hi. So she must be able to see me. And Donna, hello. Uh, let's see. I see Janet, Mary Ellen, and Kathy. So hi, guys. Thanks for joining me. I'm so excited to be here. I missed last week. I had an issue come up and I could not do it. Sorry about that. Um, running back. However, I will be unavailable at the end of the month. I am going on a trip, and so there'll be a couple weeks where I won't be available for Facebook Lives, um, but I'll let you know next week exactly what those days are going to be. So, yes, I'm going to just check really quick here to see if I'm looking, you know, if everything looks fine. The lighting is okay. The gigantic mess behind me is still there. Yeah. It's always a mess here. So anyways, hello everyone and welcome. I'm so excited you're watching me. Um, there's somewhere else I could be at this moment, but situations with uh, some family vacation prevented me from going on the Stampin' Up! cruise to the Greek Isles, where a lot of my stamping friends are right now. So, oh, sad face. But it is what it is, and so you just have to go on. So here we are doing some Facebook Live. Um, I have some cute projects for you. So I hope you're excited about that. And um, we do have our specials going on this month. We have our extra, extra promotion, which is for you to sign up as a demonstrator, giving you an extra $30 in your kit. And then we also have the bonus days coupon codes special that's going on right now. So if you order for every $50 that you order, Stampin' Up! will email you a coupon code worth $5 off any order in August. And now you can place multiple orders in July. You can earn as many coupon codes as you want. Um, and then you can redeem them all on one order if you wanted to in August, or you could place multiple orders and take, you know, $5 off each one, however you want to do it. But that goes through July 31st is the earning period. So like I said, again, every $50 you order, that's before shipping and tax, um, you'll get a coupon code. And then in August, you go in and place an order and then you add those coupon codes and that will reduce the amount of money that you owe for your order. So it's awesome. Buy some things now that you need and get some free stuff next month, which is super exciting. So the coupon codes do expire at the end of August. So you earn them by July 31st, redeem them by August 31st. So that is pretty cool. So... um what else was I going to say? I don't know if you guys are aware, but I live in Sheridan, Wyoming. And every year, I don't know if it's always the second week of July or what it is exactly, but in July, uh, we host the Sheridan Wyo Rodeo. And it's been going on for, I don't even know, 30 years, 40 years, as long as I've been here. I've been here 12 years. It's been every year that I've been here. I know it was multiple years before that. It is a huge, huge deal. People fly in here from all over the world to watch the rodeo. And that's in the evening. And then during the day, we have some other fun festivities. Like we had the boot kickoff uh, on Tuesday night, which is actually you have a cowboy boot on your foot and you kind of like take a run and you flick your foot and you fling your boot off your foot as far as you possibly can. I um, mean, they have different age groups and then there's prizes. Um, they have tomorrow, they have their little rubber duck race, which we put them in this creek in one of our big parks and they float down and whoever's uh, duck gets their first one's a prize. We have um, a carnival in town up near the rodeo grounds for all the kiddos. We have uh, tomorrow morning is the giant Sheridan Wild Rodeo Parade that runs down um, our main street, circles around and goes down another street called, of course, now I can't remember. Can't remember. Anyway, circles around, it's huge. And then we have uh, like a, a race, like a, a couple mile race that people partake in. There's bed races, which my daughter is partaking in that, where you actually build yourself a bed uh, with like bicycle tires on a frame. And then you have a steering mechanism and you have two people sitting on the bed. And then you have four people pushing the bed down the street. Um, and they give a prize for the fastest bed, which is usually our local track team boys. And then also a prize for the best dressed bet. And so my 
daughter is doing her bed based on the movie Grease. So she's going to have a couple boys that are going to be the T-Birds and there's going to be four girls that are going to be the Pink Ladies. And so that should be pretty exciting. So she's pretty excited about that. So yeah, it's a big deal here. A lot of local people like myself stay as far away from all that as possible because I'm not kidding you. There are probably tens of thousands of people that flock into our town. And our town is only like 16,000 people to begin with. So we're not a huge community. And so when you bring in, you know, an extra 10 or 20,000 people, whoa, it's a lot of people. And so I am one of the locals that stays home for this whole week because I, I'm just not, I just don't partake in that kind of stuff. When my kids were little, I'd take them to the parade and we'd maybe go to the carnival. I've never been a rodeo person, so I've never attended the wild rodeo, which I heard is really cool. Um, and so anyway, I'm going to stay home. So I'm probably going to do some stamping. I'm actually having a class on Saturday. So if you're local to me and you want to come do some stamping, I have a card buffet class that I'm doing. So come over and make some cards and not, not uh, partake in any of the craziness. Oh, Mary Ellen, she lives here too. And she's staying home too. So yeah, a lot of the locals, a lot of people will leave and rent out their house, like as an Airbnb type of, th type of thing. And I do uh, have a friend who does that with his house every rodeo week. And he gets like $2,500 for the week. For like five days to uh, rent out his house so it's like maybe I should do that but then I have, where could I stamp anyway so yeah so that's kind of what's going on around here it's fun but it's craziness so yeah so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera because I do have a few more things to talk about but I wanted to show you some flyers that I have and then I want to talk about my newest online class that's coming out next week with the sailing home bundle and I'm going to show you a few cards done with the bundle now mind you these cards are not in my class um, cards that I show on my blog and in Facebook lives and stuff like that are never in my online classes um, all my online classes are exclusive cards to the class and I don't share them anywhere else. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip you guys around. So here we go. There we have it. All right, make sure we're kind of straight here a little bit. Oh, I forgot to give away the cards that I made last week. Well, the winner is Patricia Mendola. And in case you weren't with me two weeks ago, these are the cards that I made. I made this little fun card using the Sweetly Swirled stamp set that's new to our catalog. And I just did a little note card with envelope and did decorate the envelope. I made this card with some of our, oops, that got bent. Um, Petal Passion, I think it's called, Designer Series Paper Stack. And then we have this fun um, heritage frame, uh, the square one. We've got our sentiment. And then we did add some butterflies because we just needed to add something. And then a little tiny piece of ribbon. And then we made this using our fun pigment sprinkles. And so if you didn't see me two weeks ago and you want to know how to use pigment sprinkles go back and watch that because pigment sprinkles are super super fun and so there's a card that i made with the pigment sprinkles so these are the cards and so patricia please um facebook message me your address so i can get these out to you because i do not know patricia and so i'm going to set these aside and wait for her to contact me okay oh glasses Yep, got to have some glasses on. So here are a few cards made with the Sailing Home Bundle. Hello, Kathy, how are you? And these are just uh, some samples I've gotten in some swaps. I will be doing one of my multi-card videos on this bundle. Let me get those things out of the way. Um, and I'll show you these cards again and talk about them a little bit. But here's just a few. So I am doing an online class. It'll be live next week on Friday, which is what, the 19th or something like that. None of these cards will be in that class. I'm showing you these so they won't be in my class. If I don't show them to you, then they're in the class. So there you go. Okay. So like I said, the extra, extra promotion is going on right now. This is for you to sign up as a demonstrator on my team. You get an extra $30 in your kit right now. So you choose $155 for $99. And then the month following you signing up, you'll get a $10 coupon code emailed to you to use on another order. So this goes through July, no, August 31st. Um, you can sign up at my website, barbstamps.com. Along the top um, header, you'll see something that says join my team. And then you can do that and sign up. And we do have a lot of fun on our Facebook group. We share a lot of good stuff on there, sh samples and challenges. And just we just have a lot of fun. All right. And then again, uh, reiterating the bonus days that have started going through the end of July for every $50 you spend before shipping and tax, you'll get a $5 bonus coupon emailed to you that you can use in August. There is no limit to how many coupons you can earn and there is no limit to any to the number of coupons that you can redeem on an order in August. 
Let's see, Vicki's saying that she has a huge celebration on July 4th in her town. She does participate, but she's glad it's only one day. <laughs> I hear you, Vicki. Okay, then those of you who might be Paper Pumpkin subscribers, or maybe those of you who have been thinking about subscribing to Paper Pumpkin, this is a sneak peek at the August kit, okay? Don't look at this just yet because this is not part of the kit. This is a special adder. So the kit is going to be an autumn themed kit. It's going to have some fun die cuts and it's going to make eight gift bags with, you'll have tags and die cuts and fun things to decorate the gift bags. Um, but a lot of people like cards. They like making cards with their paper pumpkin kit. So now I think this is a trial run. Stampin' Up! is going to be offering, I'm going to scoot it up just a little bit. They're going to be adding something called the Gift of Fall add-on bundle. This bundle includes 24 card bases, 12 each of two different designs, and then the coordinating envelopes to go with that. So if you are a Paper Pumpkin subscriber, I mean, and even if you're not, these are amazing looking cards and amazing envelopes. And this set of 24 is $10. It can be ordered August 1st, and it's while supplies last. So it's definitely a companion kit to our August Paper Pumpkin, but it could certainly be used alone without the Paper Pumpkin products, just as card bases and envelopes. So like I said, it's a $10 adder and this is super cool and it can be ordered August 1st while supplies last. So I have no idea um, how long it's going to last. Um, so if you do want it, I highly recommend getting on the website August 1st. You could even use your coupon codes that you earn in July. You could possibly get it for free and only pay shipping depending on how many codes you have. So I think the kit is going to be amazing. I think we get a little sneak peek here at some of the uh, die cuts that are going to be included in it. So that's going to be cool. The little bags, I think, are about like this tall. If I was like this tall, this tall. Um, with, of course, the handles. Oh, geez. Sorry about that. With the handles. And so I am super excited about this. I am definitely ordering this on August 1st along with my demonstrator pre-order from the holiday catalog. Yes, if you're a demonstrator, you get to pre-order from the holiday catalog August 1st. So you could add this to your pre-order and get so many new things, it would be crazy. All right, so we're done with that. Put my cards away here and grab my first bucket. Let's do this. All right, so we are going to use our Dino Days stamp set. There's a glare. And I did use this last time I stamped. Was it last? No, a couple weeks ago. It's so stinking cute. I don't even have little kids anymore in my house, but I just had to have this because it is so stinking cute. And then it has the coordinating die set that I don't have over here by my uh, video. So I'm going to pull out my catalog and we're going to look at them because they're super cute. Uh, so here's the dies that come with, or that you can get with the stamp. So we have a die for the Brontosaurus, the Tyrannosaurus Rex, the, uh, Pterodactyl, the Stegosaurus, and then the Stegosaurus has, of course, his little spine die. Tyrannosaurus Rex has his little spine die. We've got a little palm tree, and then we have a little egg, which is super cute. And it all coordinates with these super fun, amazingly cute products on pages 98, 99, and 100. Oh! <gasps> So you can see here's the little um, goodies cut out. This little guy here, he's actually cut out of the designer series paper. We have a sheet in the designer series paper, this one right here. And these little guys are all full size. They're the same size as the stamped images. And you can die cut them with the dies in the set. So that is super cool. Okay, so we've got our stamp set out. Here are my ink colors, Flirty Flamingo, Lovely Lipstick, and some pretty peacock. Got some paper. I'm gonna have a mango melody card base. I've got a layer of what is that? Old olive. A couple of strips of the designer series paper. Here's the opposite side of that in case you're wanting to follow along. And then I have some die cut rectangles. And this is the rectangle that's kind of all by itself. There are like some super long skinny ones. I think there's four long skinny ones. And then I think there's eight kind of regular size rectangles like this size, but then smaller. This means smaller, just in case you didn't know that. Um, and then, <laughs> this is the oddball. He doesn't have anything that goes with him, but he's super cute. So we are going to use that. And I have my stamps here. So I have the pterodactyl and we have our little brontosaurus. And then we have one of the sentiments from the set. I'm going to bring in a foam mat because it's their photopolymer. Uh, I'm going to 
use a foam mat. And I'm going to try to fold this in half with my bad eyeballs. Okay. And then here is our piece of old olive, these little guys. Okay, so I need three of these. I did uh, die cut myself an extra one just in case I screw it up because you, know, you never know. You're live. It could happen. All right. So we've got some flirty flamingo, the pretty peacock, and the lovely lipstick. Oh, and I should say, for those of you that have placed orders with me in the last six months, I will be sending you your catalog. So check yourself out there. If you're not sure if you've ordered from me, let me know. I'm happy to check, and then I'm happy to send you a catalog if you've ordered. So yay. Okay, it has to be a $50 order in the last six months in order to get the catalog for free. So if you haven't ordered enough, you still have July to order from me and you get the free $5 coupon code if you order $50 or more now. So, okay, so we have our little pterodactyl and you can see, look at the detail in that. You can see how he's lighter right there where his wing kind of folds and over here too. Somehow Stampin' Up! is able to put that into a photopolymer stamp. I don't understand it myself, but yes it is. Okay, so then we've got the brontosaurus, where is he? He's going to be in some pretty peacock. So I'm going to, let's see, I want him mostly on it. Of course, he's not going to fit completely. But I just want his cute little head because he is pretty cute. And then lastly, we are going to stamp our sentiment that says, thanks for being a friendosaurus. And that should fit right on here. Let me just kind of focus myself for a minute. Oops. Well, I have an extra one, so I'm going to go ahead and try it because I think I'm a little close on this side here where the S is. I think I could be a little farther over. So we're going to try that again. We're going to push that over just a bit. Um, well, that's better. It's a little low, but it's fine. Okay, so we have our three little stamped images. We don't need these anymore. I know, Teresa, isn't that adorable? Like I said, I don't have any kids. I have no grandkids, but Oh no, look what I just did. Not paying attention. Got ink on my hand. Good thing I saw it because if I didn't see it, then we all know what would happen. We would have pretty peacock ink all over something. Okay, so I just cleaned that off. Oh, I bet I touched my finger on this. We better just go ahead and clean that off right now because apparently that's a problem for Barb. All right, so my chamois, I did re, uh, clean it right before I went live, so it's clean. It's just stained and filthy, but oh my gosh, it just works so good. It's my favorite thing. Boy, when I make a mess, I make a mess. Okay, so I'm going to put these back in my bucket along with these ink pads because I don't need them anymore either. All right, so we're going to take our two pieces of designer series paper, and we're going to add them to this piece of old olive. Now these pieces here measure, oh my gosh, is that more ink on myself or is that from earlier? I think that's from earlier. These are one and a half, excuse me, that's not right. They're one and a quarter by five and a quarter. And I've got two of them. There we go. Get the other one here. All right. So one at the top, one at the bottom. There we go. Okay, and I think, yeah, I thought so. This one's just a hair long. No problem, we can just snip that right off. Oh, it looks like I did a hair long on this side too. That means one of these papers is not quite the size I said, but it's so close it doesn't matter. Okay, then we're gonna take these little guys and we're gonna add them with some dimensionals. And this is a really simple card, honestly. Oh, you can see, I tried, I was gonna see if I liked Pool Party for the brontosaurus. This was yesterday when I was making this. I didn't realize I still had this piece. So anyway, we're not going pool party. We're going pretty peacock. Okay. So I'm just going to set this in the center from top to bottom, right at the edge. There we go. And then my pterodactyl, I'm going to do on the other edge, same thing, center it from top to bottom and then right at the edge. Okay. And then my sentiment is going to go right in between these two. Same thing, centering it from top to bottom and then centering it between those two. About like so-ish. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue this to my main card. And since I've got a little bit of weight on this, I'm going to go ahead and use my liquid glue. 
just to make sure that it sticks. And there we go. And that's literally all there is to it. Now you could, what did I do with those little things? I think they're back here. Well, let me grab them. We do have these super cute little epoxy shapes. And now that I'm looking at this, I kind of think maybe we should add one. Maybe we can use our take your pick tool. No, that's on there. Well, if I loosen it up, then I can probably get it off. Come off there. Work with me for heaven's sakes. And maybe I'll just stick that like that. We'll add just one little fun thing so then that little white space is kind of taken up. So there we go. So what do you guys think of that? I just think it's adorable and I love this set. When I saw this in the catalog, I immediately knew I was going to buy it. And so I did and I have actually had a lot of fun with it. Oh, you know what I should do? I have a few cards. Maybe I should show you a few that I have here. There's this one. Isn't that cute? This is one of those kind of fun folds. Super fun with our cute little dinosaur friends. And these are a couple more patterns of the designer series paper that are so stinking cute. So we have that one. Let's see, I don't want to show you all of them because I might be doing one of my uh, multi-card videos. So here's another one. I'm going to take it out of this plastic sleeve because yeah, you get glare that way. So here's another one. This is on uh, pineapple punch. So we have our little brontosaurus. We have a couple of the palm fronds. It has this cute little dinosaur foot track mark. We've got the fun double-sided ribbon here, a bunch of stitched shapes. So I just think that's adorable. So those are the couple that I'll show you today. Maybe I'll show you some others some other time. So I'm gonna put this one away because someone's gonna win that. So please share the video. Whoops, I keep knocking that camera. It must, I don't know why it's in the same spot it's always in. So somebody tell me why I would knock it all the time now. Who knows? All right, we will get this stuff cleaned up and we will move on to our next project. All right, so let's do this one here. Get out some supplies. Okay, so last time I was live, I used our pigment sprinkles. And these are pigment sprinkles. And what you do with pigment sprinkles is... They're just little containers full of exploding color, okay? So there's little containers. They have a lid. Thanks for sharing, you guys. And then there's a little sprinkle, like a salt shaker. There's three little holes here. Well, I have found that three holes is way too many holes, and you will get a lot of sprinkle out of there. So I've gone ahead and covered up a few, and I have like a half of a hole open up there. And so you just use them with water. Water just makes the colors, but I'm not actually going to use them today. Um, if you want to see how I did it, look at my video from a couple of weeks ago. Um, but I'm going to show you the projects that I did. I showed you the one in the set of cards that I'm giving away. And then I didn't actually make these, but I showed you them. So this one I used three of the colors, the Granny Apple Green, the Bermuda Bay, and the Gorgeous Grape. And then this one I used the Daffodil Delight, the Mango Melody, and the um, melon mambo and I just sprinkled them on some watercolor paper used a stamp and spritzer to get them all wet and then I just let them dry okay so that's what I've done on this piece of cardstock right here I used granny apple green and Bermuda Bay and I sprinkled it I spritzed it I kind of did this a little bit with it let it run and then I let it dry and so that's what I come up with and so I actually didn't really like it to be quite honest, I thought it was kind of ugly, but I needed a card for my big shot at home girls and uh, Teresa's watching. So she's going to get a sneak peek of one of the cards that's in the set this month. And um, I just went ahead and, and, and put it all together. And then I was totally in love with it. So that's what we're going to do. So we've got this piece already done. It's watercolor paper, some granny apple green sprinkles here. I kind of divided it on the diagonal. So I put granny apple green sprinkles here, the Bermuda Bay sprinkles here, spritzed it with a bunch of water. Like I said, kind of wiggled it around a little bit and then I dried it with my heat tool and this is what I ended up with. So I also have a layer of black. So this is actually cut to three and three quarters by five. And then my layer of black is three and 15 sixteenths by five and three sixteenths. So it's just a little bit of a border, not a whole bunch, but enough that it's going to really make this layer pop off of our Bermuda Bay card base. 
Teresa says she loves getting her big shot at home class every month. And yes, I do too enjoy making it. I have been doing it for, oh my gosh, I don't know. This is like the 70th month, whatever that translates to. I do it uh, twice a year. It's four months at a time. So for like right now we've started and we've done June, July, we'll do August and September. So that's a four month run. And at the end of September, all the participants get a $150 order that they can purchase and I pay for it. It's a gift for me for their class fees. They pay me about $50 a month. I send them project pieces to um, play with and then they um, place their orders. So it's really fun. So this is what we've got so far. We've got that on black. We've got our card base. Then I wanted to use, oh my, what did I do with them? Again, I don't remember. Where's my catalog? Ugh. I'm just going to have to see if I can somehow move my video station over by my big shot, but I just don't know if I can. My room just isn't set up that way. Okay, this, the dies that we're using is called, ugh, right here, Sweet Silhouettes. So we've got this really fun tree leaf kind of uh, thing going on. We've got a dandelion that was in this card here. So this is one of those dandelions. Actually, it's three of those dandelions. And then we have three words, inspire forever and adventure. So it's a set of five and it coordinates with this stamp set here, the silhouette scenes stamp set. And so we're gonna use just a sentiment out of here today. So we're using the keep dreaming sentiment and I have that on my Stamparatus. And so we're going to do that first. We're gonna stamp our keep dreaming onto this piece of watercolor paper. Okay, so there's my little stamp. I already kind of positioned it where I thought it would work. And so I've got my card stock right here in the corner. I'm gonna use two magnets. Normally I can get away with using one, but when you have watercolor paper, it does kind of bend and buckle. And so it's not completely flat. So I mounted my stamp and that's where it's gonna end up being. And I'm using my Stamparatus because when I use watercolor paper, a lot of times I don't get a really perfect impression the first time. I do it and so that way I can ink it up again and stamp it again if I miss a spot or something because watercolor paper is a little more uh, bumpy and porous than regular cardstock but that actually worked out pretty good so we're only going to be I have to do it once so I could have just stamped it without my stamparitis but I wanted to make sure okay so we're going to get our cardstock piece out of here and I need to use this so that my there my stamp doesn't get onto my other side of my uh, Stamparatus there. So I am going to kind of let that dry because I can see that it's a little bit wet still. So I'm going to be mindful and not touch it while we talk about the dye. So here's the big tree dye that I talked about and here's my forever word. So I just ran this through on a piece of a basic black and now I'm going to get all these little bits out of it. So I'm going to bring in my foam mat and I just use a paper pumpkin box for this and my take your pick tool and this is the little die brush attachment. So you spin off the putty end. I actually have two of these tools so that I can do it like this. Spin off the putty end and then spin on your uh, die brush attachment. And then you can just, hopefully, you can get this little tree piece out of here. All right, so. It's coming out. We got to be careful. Flip it over and see where it's sticking. So it's sticking like right there. I can sort of see it with my blind eyes. Come on out of there. What is it doing right there? There. Oh, it came out. Okay. So we'll just continue picking pieces out oh my did I only run this through my big shot one time it's possible that I was messing around this afternoon and not paying attention to what I was doing and only ran it through one time so we'll see what happens here if I can't get all these bits out I have some other ones already cut that I will get but we will try okay so you can see there's lots of little bits it can be a tiny bit fussy but I find the reward of the amazingness of this dye. Yes, amazingness is a word today. Um, far outweighs the puttiness of it. Okay, and then we have this little guy here that we need to get out. 
yeah that's what I did usually I run these detailed dies through more than once when I'm running them through my big shot and um, I reposition them each time and I don't think I did that with this one so hold on you know I don't want to ruin this so I'm going to cut it apart gently later but I will grab another one because they're all ready for me to be mailing out to my participants here very soon okay so this is what it looks like isn't that amazing i know right and because it's so amazing i'm going to show you another card that i have with this look at this cool card i got in a swap where they did it in white and that cute little heart is hanging from the tree i just love that i'm not sure where that sentiment is from off the top of my head but i do really like it so there's another way you can use that okay so now i'm going to add some glue to the back side so i'm going to get most of the large trunk here and so when i use my liquid glue i use it very sparingly on these detailed die cuts here and so i'm just kind of barely getting any glue on these little leaf pieces here there we go down here over there right there okay so we have some liquid glue on here and we're going to just add that whoops i'm going to bring in a silicone mat because it's going to probably hang off the edge just a tad okay so we are going to put it on about like this. It's stuck on my finger. Hee <laughs> hee. Okay. Get that all nice and stuck down. And then we're going to layer this to the piece of black. Again, I'm going to use liquid glue, especially on the watercolor paper, because like I did say, it does buckle and bend and it can give you the business. So we will add this to our layer of black. There we go. And as you can see, after you start working with this, in, at least for to me, it becomes less ugly. <laughs> and now I'm going to add the forever sentiment. Doing that the same way, just a tiny bit. Whoops, that's too much. I'll just tap my finger on it if I get too much. Kind of smear it around a little bit that way. Okay, and our R. Got to make sure we get glue on most of this. Oh, I should get it down there too. Okay. Oh, see, there's too much right there. We're going to get that off. And then we're going to add our little forever. And now I did change up the wording on the card that the other girls are going to make. This is just one that I came up with for today. There we go. Okay, then we're gonna add a few rhinestones here and there. Got my little take your pick tool, got my little putty end on there. And we'll just pull those off and we'll just kind of randomly Kind of place them oops get on there around there that looks pretty good and then we'll just add that to our card base this is bermuda bay but before i do that i'm actually going to snip off the trunk okay you can have the leaves hanging out and hopefully they don't hang out too far we may have to snip some of them off we'll see we'll see what we think all right so we'll get this centered onto the card base all right so i hope you guys all had a lovely fourth of july that was last week that was another reason why i was not live i was doing some fourth of july stuff and i am going to trim these off just a tiny bit and these two because if i don't they're just going to get bent anyway that'll be no good okay and so there we have it and so that ugly piece that i thought was so ugly i don't really think is that ugly actually so um yeah after i just added a little bit of black 
I thought it turned out pretty good. So if you guys want to hang on for just a second, I can go get you the rest of the backgrounds that I made for the girls and I'll show you how different they all turned out. And hopefully you'll think they're pretty cool. Okay. So here's my card. Get my mess cleaned up here. And then here are the other backgrounds that I made. So they're all like the same, but totally different. So super fun. So I hope they like them. Teresa says it's a great card, so I think she'll like it. So yay. And of course, I think it would look really awesome with any of the other color combinations in the Pigma Sprinkles too. Like the purple and the pink, I think would look really cool together. Uh, the yellow and the green would look good. The yellow and the blue, the purple and the yellow. I mean, you could just do all kinds of things. And of course, if you mix them together, um, you never know what you're going to get. So you might get this kind of fun lighter kind of bluish color in there so anyways yeah so i hope they all enjoy that and then we're going to move that over to here where we're going to keep it so that i can package them all up and award them next week all right let me just brush off my stuff oh here's my host code for the month of july in case you want to order from me y'all know i'd love that I'm trying to earn that trip to maui next year so i need all the orders i can get all right. Lastly, we're going to move on to this card and we're going to use the Path of Petals stamp set and the, what are these called? It's anyone's guess. Who knows? I don't know. I have little bits of leaves stuck in my fingers. Hold on. Okay. The dies are amazing, but I can't remember what they're called. Yes, Kathy, you should totally order those sparkly, those pigment sprinkles because they are super cute. Okay, this die set is called Petal Labels Dies, and this is what they do. So we have the large one here, this fun detail one, then we have this little guy here that can also cut out the center of this one here if you didn't want to have, if you just want to have an outline like this one, you could cut that out. So that's what we're using on our next card. Let me get these put away. And they coordinate with the Path of Petal stamp set sold as a bundle. Okay, so in this, we're going to use this kind of, um, I don't even know what you call that. looks like weeds to me, but I'm sure that's not what it's called. We're going to use the weeds and uh, one of the sentiments. Your kindness has touched my heart is the sentiment that we're going to use. So, alrighty. So I have a Whisper White thick card base. This is our thick Whisper White. It's awesome because it totally stands up when it's on the desk or the table. Whereas our other Whisper White can sometimes kind of buckle. It's not quite as thick. Uh, we also sell this in vanilla. So either one of these is amazing. And I do like using them if I, I'm using a uh, neutralish card base. Then I have a piece of our designer series paper. This is the in colors. Let me grab that. The 2019-2021 in color package. And so we have the terracotta tile in the two different patterns. Those two, we also have the same patterns in the Seaside Spray, the Rococo Rose, the Purple Posy, and then the uh, Pretty Peacock. So we're going to use a piece of Seaside Spray in this kind of uh, Easterny pattern. I don't know what those things are called. I can think it's just like on the tip of my tongue. We used to have a punch that looked like this and I will be darned if I can remember what, what it's called. Anyways, it's a fun little pattern that looks like this. Okay, then I have a circle and where's my die so I can show you how I did that. Um, oh my gosh, you guys. Okay, here we go. So these are the heirloom frames dies. It's a set of two. Um, you can buy it in a bundle, and I can't remember what it comes with. Well, we have our catalog right here. We can always look. So the heirloom frames dies. La 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 la. Where are they? Oh, they actually. Oh, I know. It's a bundle with embossing folders. That's right, because that card that I showed you earlier in the video, that Patricia one, um, I used the die cut and then I used the folder on it. And maybe I better just find it here because somebody might not have been joining us at the beginning and might not have any idea what I'm talking about. So here it is. 
This is a square. No, it's not. It's a rectangle. So I originally die cut the piece of Mary Merlot with this rectangle, and then I ran it through the Big Shot with its coordinating folder. So you can get this really awesome framed impression here. Okay. So it's a set of two dies and then also a set of two folders. So I use the oval in this one. And so you get the frame and the inside piece. So, but we're only using the outside piece here. So I cut that out. And then I die cut the big, huge um, floral die. Why am I struggling so much? I swear, every time I'm live, the struggle is real. So this large die here, I cut that out of a piece of Whisper White. And because I know some of you hate to watch me color, I did color most of it with some Stampin' Blends, but I am going to finish it off. So I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. Uh, because it can bleed through. Okay, so I've got my Stampin' Blends here. So I've got dark seaside spray on these flowers, and then I have light mint macaron on most of these kind of leafy, spindly kind of things. But I am going to use the dark to finish off some of these leafy things, just for a little bit of contrast. And I am blind as a bat when it comes to coloring up close. So bear with me, please. So we're going to get this little spindly thing here. I love using Stampin' Blend, you guys, because you don't really have to do any blending. Like with our Stampin' Write markers, they're amazing, but they don't really blend because that's not what they're designed to do. And so I just really love having things blending. Okay, so did I use the dark? Yes. Okay, so we're going to do the flowers with the dark. And I'm just like making stripe motions across these flowers rather than trying to color because I find that the marker just keeps hitting the edge of the flower, the edge of the die cut here, and it's just it's kind of annoying. So I found if I just go straight across, you know, and pick up my pen for each stroke, I have better luck. Okay. So, and then I'm going to bring in my light seaside spray, and I am going to circle this one around just a little bit, just to blend the dark a bit. Oops, see what happens when you try to do that? It gets a little bit screwed up. Okay, so here is this. I'm going to try to find something to put in the background. Okay, so that's what I've done then. I've colored that honeycomb. What was the DSP on the Mary Merlot card? Stamp it, stamp set. Doreen, I can't marry my little card. Are you talking about this? If Doreen's talking about this, uh, let's see, was the DSP, what was the DSP? This is the, I think it's called uh, Perfect Petals or, no, it's not. This isn't stamped. Only thing that's stamped is the sentiment. And I don't know what the stamp set is that came from. I can't remember. But if that's the card you're talking about, this is the paper pack. And I don't know what it's called, so let's just find it out here. It is called Pressed Petals. Pressed Petals Specialty Designer Series Paper. And we've got a really fun wood grain pattern with that. Flowers. Uh, some music notes with a piece that has a bunch of things you can crop out. We've got that paper there. With that, we've got some like linen looking stuff or canvas with some foliage that one and that one so there's a lot of fun papers and this is actually like a double package because the pages are super thin so you actually get 24 sheets in this um, rather than the standard 12 that we normally have in all of them so there we have it okay so that is our this piece here so i'm going to take this mint macaron piece and a versamark pad i need my uh here we go I need my messy mat here because I'm going to be using what I called weeds. So this is the weed image. Let me show you again what it looks like actually on the package. So it's this one here. So these are designed to be used together as like three-step stamping. So here's like the vines. You stamp the flowers over the vines and then these little weedy pieces around it again. And if you do that, you end up with a cart. You, look, you get this. So here's those three images stamped around each other. Super easy to line them up. Even if they're not perfectly lined up, they look like they're lined up and they're amazing. And then you have this fun um, 
piece here that comes in the die set and then the little oval that uh, comes out of the middle there. So that's what I'm using, this little piece of this little weed stamp here. All right, so I'm going to take a few of these and I'm just going to kind of stamp them in the corners of this card. Okay, and I'm going to switch it and use these little weeds here for this corner. Like that, just so I have a little something on the front so it's not super plain. Okay, put the weeds away. And now I have my sentiment. And I'm going to stamp that on some white. I need a piece of white. Here we go. And this is mint macaron. So I'm going to stamp that. I'm done with this. And then I would take this over to my big shot and I would use my stitched ovals. This comes as three different, so we have ovals, squares, and circles, four of each. And so this is the second to largest stitched oval. Okay. So now I think I have most of my stamping. I think I should have all my stamping done. So we're going to do some assembly now. Okay. So this, remember this came out of the heirloom frames set. So I'm going to add some adhesive, uh, some liquid glue. Where is it? Right here. It's always right in front of me. Right around the cutout piece here. Okay. We'll just get that all the way around. Oops. There we go. I'm going to bring this in because I'm going to cover this white colored with this. All right. So let's see how good of a job we can do to get it basically lined up properly. You can see my struggle is real. Everyone else would probably not be struggling, but Barb is. Why is this becoming such a problem? That has to rotate. Yes, that was the problem. I was trying to rotate it the wrong direction, I think. Okay. Press that into place. And now I have this excess white. I don't need it. So I'm literally just going to cut it off. Okay. Come on. There we go. All right. Then I'm going to layer this onto the designer series paper. So I'm going to add, where's the glue go? Right here. Add the adhesive around this frame. And then I'm going to take it and add it to a little bit of the flower pieces too because I do want these things to kind of stick down onto the designer series paper. So we will very gently add some glue to some of these little pieces. Okay. And now this piece, this is cut to, let me think here for a second. It's, blah, 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 blah. is it four and an eighth by five and three eighths? I think. Okay, get that on there. And again, we might have a little bit of excess here on the side. No big deal. We can just cut that off. Okay. Then, before we add it to the card base, I'm going to bring in some of our braided linen trim. I think this was called. La 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 la. Braided linen trim. <clears throat> trim. Yes. So it's actually like a bunch of linen threads braided into a little bit thicker piece. And I like this. Sometimes the linen thread just isn't quite thick enough. So I'm going to add this around. What's that doing there? No idea. Okay. So we're going to do it right across the center. So let me get my bearings here. And I like to use scotch tape when I add things to a card just because I just feel like they lay down nicer and it's just easier. Okay, I want it to be flat. So there we go. I need some scissors. Move the ink. Oh gosh, Pam, you are so right because you know what's going to happen, don't you? It probably already has happened. 
I probably already stuck my hand in it immediately, if not sooner. She closes the ink. Thank you, Pam. Okay, check the hands. Hand check. I think we're good. I had a piece of tape on it, but the rest of this, I think, is from earlier. So, whew. yeah, that would have been a disaster because we all know that I would have stuck my hand right in there. Okay, and now I'm going to add this with some dimensionals. So we will add five. Okay. those off. Come on. Oh, come on. All right. And then we're going to center that onto our card base. And so it's just a, oh, wait a second. Before I do that. Oh, don't, 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 don't. Not ready. Because I just saw some of the designer series paper peeking its little head through down here that I missed. So I'm going to cut this off because I don't want it to show there. All right, let's check this really well this time, Barb. I don't know what that was, but I think, I think we have it now. Okay, phew. Almost had a disaster with ink, and then we almost had a disaster with paper sticking out and looking silly. Okay, there. And then finally, we have our sentiment. Well, not finally. I think I was going to do something else with this, and now I don't remember what it was. Anyways, I'm going to bump this up on dimensionals. So I'm going to use a couple of strips. And I'm going to like straddle the, uh, th uh, the trim, the braided linen trim. Okay. And that's going to go, try to make it, is that right? Yeah. And then I have a little bow that I tied with that same trim. And I'm going to add it with a glue dot. right here right there right there at the bottom I think we're gonna kind of go like this okay and I think these might be a tad bit on the long side so we're gonna snip those off just a bit okay what do you guys think of that I thought it was kind of cool when I got it done something different some different textures I thought kind of made the whole thing work really well so anyway I hope you guys like it so give it a thumbs up so that is all I have for you guys tonight. If you're interested in shopping with me, I would love to have your business at shoppingwithbarb.com. Also, I have online classes for sale at barbstamps.com. I'm going to find the rest of my cards here. And I would love for you to give one of those a try. I think if you actually did try one, you would love them because they are amazing. And I have videos and instructions for every um, project in the class. So, yes. So I hope you guys enjoyed these projects. I hope you had a wonderful 4th of July. I hope your summer is going amazing well. Take care to all of you that are down in the flooding areas again, down in the south. Uh, prayers to you guys. Um, and anywhere else we may be having some crazy weather. I know this year has been just crazy weather all over the place. So I will see you guys next week. Same time, same place. Bye-bye.